Hello BC Calculus students, this is Mr. Johnson and this is section 3.7 and it's on derivatives of log functions and we'll also do some exponential functions along with it. As an opener we're going to look at uh, the derivative of natural log of x which is one that you know that you're really familiar with as well as the natural or the uh, derivative of log base a of x which is not as common. I'm going to show you really quickly where the derivative of the natural log of x comes from. You probably saw it in AB but you've maybe since then forgotten it. Um, it's kind of a neat little um, algebraic representation of what the derivative of natural log of x is. So what actually what we're going to do here first is write it as an exponential function. So I'm going to start with y equal to the natural log of x and I'm going to change that into e to the y is equal to x and then what we're going to do is take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So we get e to the y times dy dx because it's an implicit derivative and then of course it's all equal to the derivative of x which is 1. If we solve for dy dx we get 1 divided by e to the y. Now remember e to the y is equal to x which we have at the beginning here. So all we need to do then is do a final substitution and what we have for our derivative is dy dx equal to 1 over x since e to the y is equal to x. So there you go. That's the, the derivative that you all have used many, many times and you've memorized it, but that's kind of just a little uh, proof to show what it is. Uh, with the uh, log base a of x, you could do a similar proof. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I'm just going to remind you of what the derivative is. It's 1 divided by x ln of a. So that is another one you should memorize. Again, it's not very common, but we have to be prepared for it if it does show up. So as just a quick review of these four, we have the derivative of a natural log of a function f of x is 1 divided by f of x. And then because of the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of f of x. For a to the f of x, we have a to the f of x times ln of a. And then because of the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of f of x. Log base a of x, we just talked about. That's 1 divided by the function f of x times ln of a. And then again, because of the chain rule, we have f prime of x. And then e to the f of x times f prime of x, which again, we've also talked about a number of times. Okay, let's do some examples. Most of these are pretty quick. Uh, the fourth example especially is a bit longer, but most of these other ones are pretty fast. So for example one, we have the derivative of uh, f of theta, and we have our equation, the natural log of cosine theta. So our derivative will be b uh, 1 divided by cosine theta and then we need to multiply by the derivative of cosine theta because of the chain rule and certainly you know this could be your answer if it was a short answer for instance but if it's a multiple choice you may see instead since it's negative sine of theta over cosine theta you might see negative tangent of theta which would be the equivalent okay for example 2 we have log base a, so this time we have our derivative, and it is 1 divided by the function on the inside of that logarithm, that argument, multiplied by the natural log of 3 times the derivative of the argument, which is 2x. And again, you very well could see it written just like that, or you may see it just as a single fraction like this. And that's really all we can do with that one. Okay, we're going to go to the next page and example three. All right, so for example three, just as a quick reminder, this one was not on our list at the beginning of the section. So the derivative of the absolute value of x is the absolute value of x over x. And we had gone through that in a different section, um, and you did see that last year as well. So in this case, for our derivative, we have f prime equal to 1 divided by absolute value of x cubed minus x squared. And we have to multiply by the derivative of the absolute value of all of that. So that's the absolute value of x cubed minus x squared divided by x cubed minus x squared. So, so far what we have is uh, right here, the derivative of the natural log. Then we have the derivative of the absolute value. And now what we're going to do is take the derivative of the inside, which is 3x squared minus 2x. 
okay, we can definitely simplify this one down. We are able to cancel these absolute value um, functions here. We can also factor an x out of these terms here. So I'm going to rewrite this as, um, let's see, this will be x times 3x minus 2. So um, again, these two absolute values cancel. I'm factoring an x out of that numerating uh, the term in the numerator. And then I'm going to factor out just a single x out of the other term, just because I know now that what we can do is cancel these x's. And so you might see this derivative as 3x minus 2 divided by x squared minus x. Okay, <clears throat> let's get into example 4. Now this one is a little bit different. And you may have seen this in AB calculus. It was more of an introduction than anything else, but it was um, not on the exam. And it's often not in that type of material. It was, I think, many, many years ago. But um, this is something that can show up in BC. Again, it's not super common, but the idea behind it is that you're combining the um, sort of the the the, the uh, polynomial definition and the um, exponential definition of a derivative all into one. So essentially, what's happening here is that you have you have variables in both the base and in the power, and so it's this unique scenario where it's not really a power function, it's not an exponential function, um, it's just more complex because there is no numeric value. In, in the base or the exponent, they're both variables of some sort. Um, and so what you want to do here is actually use logarithms. So what we're going to do is rewrite this as y equals x to the power of the uh, square root of x. Then we're going to take the natural log of both sides. Now you could take, you know, let's say log base 2 or log base 3 or something like that. The reason I'm using natural log is because its derivative is so much simpler. So you could use any logarithm here. The idea is that a logarithm is, it allows you to access the exponent. And so because of that, we're able to access this variable exponent and bring it down. Because if you remember with properties of logarithms, we can change this equation now to be the natural log of y equal to the square root of x multiplied by the natural log of x because of that that property that we talked about way back in chapter one with logarithms. So the, the reason to use logarithm, logarithms in an example like this is to be able to access the variables which are in the base as well as the power. And now if you notice, we have a set of functions here that we're able to take the derivative of, and it is gonna be implicit, but it's gonna be much easier than the alternative. So we have the derivative, we have one over y multiplied by dy dx. And we're going to do the product rule. So we have 1 half x to the negative 1 half times natural log of x plus square root of x times the derivative of natural log of x, which is 1 over x. I'm going to just work on the right side just for a moment here, just to try to simplify this down. Again, you know, without multiple choice, we don't exactly know how they would want us to leave something like this. So we're just going to play around with it slightly. So what we have is the natural log of x divided by 2 root x plus root x over x. Now, we do need to combine um, the two different fractions here generally. I mean, obviously, you know, if it was a multiple choice and this happened to be the style they were going after, which is pretty rare, um, then fine. But, you know, typically they want you to combine the fractions. So we'll multiply this one by x, multiply this by 2 root x, 2 root x. This is not the only way to combine fractions, um, but this is just one of them. So what we have then is 1 over y and dy dx. And then we'll have x ln of x plus, uh, let's see, that's 2x, because the square root of x times square root of x is just x. And then in the denominator, we have, I'll write it like this, 2 times x times root x. And if you notice, we're actually able to cancel an x for every term. So what we get on the right side, if we simplify it down as much as we can, is this. Now, you know, some of you are wanting to maybe rationalize the denominator. Some of you just want to be done. Um, it depends on, you know, again, how they write the problem. But we're not quite done because we have this this 1 over y on the left side. Remember, we're trying to solve for dy dx. So our next step, we're almost done here, is to multiply both sides by y. So we get this. 
And remember, y actually came from us. We re rewrote the equation as y equals x to the power of root x. And so we don't want to leave y written like that. What we want to do is go back up to the original um, setup that we made and say, well, OK, hold on. I assigned y the value of x to the power of square root of x. So I better plug that back in for y in order to get the equation in terms of x based on how the original was written. And then this is your final answer. So this is a little bit of an ugly process, um, but we have seen it on the exam. It's just it's just rare. So I want you to be aware of how to do it. I'll show you another one in a second here. Um, but uh, again, this is called logarithmic differentiation because we're utilizing properties of logs to be able to analyze a particular derivative. Okay, let's try example five. You'll find this one's really fast. So we're going to find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of y at the point when x is four. And uh, the derivative is pretty easy. It's one over two x times two because of the chain rule. So in other words, the derivative is just one over x. And we're analyzing the derivative at four. And boy, that seems a lot easier than that last problem, doesn't it? Okay, let's move on to the next page. Sorry, I apologize. I think I cut myself off of that last seg segment there. So we just finished example five, and now we're going to try example six. And example six is the logarithmic differentiation, which is what we're um, kind of the, the, the most difficult portion of this particular section. So again, we have this problem where there are x's in both the base and the power. We're trying to find the derivative. And so we have y is equal to uh, x to the ln of x. Our first step is to take the natural log of both sides. I know there's a lot of natural logs right now uh, in this problem. So what we have then, if we use properties of logarithms, is on the right side, the natural log of x multiplied by the natural log of x, which seems a little redundant. Um, one of the ways that we can save us, I think, a little bit of time, it's up to you. If you want to avoid doing the product rule of differentiation, and instead do the power rule, then you can make that the natural log of x, the entire thing squared. Now, please don't make the mistake of trying to bring this two down to the front. Remember, the only time you can do that property with logarithms, if the, if the power is within the argument, that two is not. That two is representative outside of the logarithm. So it's representative of log of x times log of x. Um, I think the power rule is easier, so we're going to go with this. Now we're going to take the derivative. We get 1 over y multiplied by dy dx, and that is equal to 2 natural log of x times the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x. Um, I suppose we could just simplify this one more time here before we multiply by y. So this gives us 2 natural log of x over x. Okay, then we're going to multiply by y. So we have dy dx equal to 2y natural log of x over x. And remember that y is x to the power of natural log of x. So we get for an answer 2 times x to the power of natural log of x times natural log of x over x. And I believe that is option C. Now, again, I mentioned this is not a super common technique that they're going to test you on. And look at the year in this problem. It's all the way back to uh, 1973. So it was a very long time ago this happened. I have not seen it much since then. Um, however, we don't know when it will be on the exam again, so we just want to be prepared for it. Okay, let's try our last example of the section. So example seven, we have an implicit equation, and it says that we want to try to find dy dx. So we have the natural log of x minus the natural log of y equal to y minus four. And we're going to take the derivative with respect to x. That's 1 over x minus 1 over y multiplied by dy dx equal to dy dx and the derivative of 4 is 0. Now remember, your goal here is to solve for dy dx. So I'm going to group them together on one side of the equation. So what I end up getting here is dy dx plus 1 over y dy dx and it's all equal to 1 over x, okay? Then we're going to factor out 
the dy dx so we can solve for it. So we have dy dx times the quantity 1 plus 1 over y, and that's equal to 1 over x. And then what we want to do is simply just solve by division. Now, the division is a little bit ugly looking. And I don't really care in the sense that I'm just trying to figure out what my slope is. I don't really care what the derivative looks like. So I'm not going to waste a lot of time trying to make it look fancy or make it look like maybe they want me to make it look like. Because all I'm going to do here is simply just plug in the point 4, 4. And if it's ugly, I'll deal with that a little bit. So we have 1 over 4 divided by 1 plus 1 over 4. That gives us 1 over 4 divided by um, 5 over 4. And that's the same thing as 1 over 4 times 4 over 5. And so we get 1 fifth. Okay, that does it for section 3.7. Thank you.